agree. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself a nail of reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of a man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even the death of the cross when for God also as highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow things in earth things in heaven things under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Okay, I want us to read the last scripture. The last scripture. Uh, the book of Acts, chapter 15, the best number at 25. Acts chapter 15, the best number 25 and 26. And it seems good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Okay, can you place your right hand on your hand? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel, for a necessity has been placed upon me. A child to keep my heart and a God to glorify. And a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that tonight will not be spent in vain. But tonight we will experience your presence. We will experience your power. We will experience your mighty hand upon our lives. I pray that no man, no woman, no boy, no girl will ever live here the same. I will live here imparted and blessed by thy word. Touch my tongue with a coal of fire and use me to dispense your oracle without precision and without power. Give me inner tenacity and divine audacity to speak your mind and your sagacity to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, help me to articulate words and that the inspiration of the Holy Spirit should impose your presence over this environment. Let your word have both spiritual and psychological impact on us. Bless us and favor us with your word. Let the atmosphere be charged and be fueled by your fire. And after everything is said and done, I will give you the praise, the adoration and the honor. In Jesus' powerful and majestic name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, this evening, I want to uh, I want you to fasten your seat belt uh, because this evening I have uh, a lot of work to do, and I'm going to be somehow scholastic this evening. And I believe that 
all of you are intellectuals, so you flow with me, right? Okay. I want to talk to you for uh, some few minutes on the subject of entitled Love him because he first loved you. Love him because he first loved you. Uh, when we read, uh, is somebody in the house? Yeah, I want you, I want you to, I solicit you once more attention. Now, when we read Philippians, uh, according to a Bible scholars and theologians, was actually Paul's first Roman imprisonment. So, when he wrote the book of Philippians, he was actually in prison. Right? Uh -huh. So, his hands were in chains, and then his feet were in chains. You know, Paul went through a lot of mind-blowing things. At the point, the man Paul was stoned. And then the stone became like a hail on him. When they removed the stone, Paul the apostle was dead. So when they were going to bury him, he resuscitated back to life. And then instead of throwing in the towel, he said, men and brethren, Let's go and preach the gospel. And let's believe that Apostle Paul was king with the Lord. 39 multiplied by 5. And you know, Apostle Paul was actually decapitated. When they were going to, you know, decapitate him, he knew he was going to be killed. Because Agabus the prophet took the mantle of Paul and wrapped it on himself. And he said that the man that has this um, mantle, if he goes to Jerusalem, he's going to be beaten. And Paul told Agabus, no, no, I'm not just going to be beaten. I know I'm going to be killed. So Paul wrote a letter to his son Timothy. And he said, son Timothy, the time of my departure is at hand. I am about to be offered, but I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I've kept the faith. Now a crown of glory is waiting for me. And who is the righteous dead will give me on that day? And not, not unto me alone, but unto all those that love his appearing. So it is believed by scholars that Paul was actually beheaded. So they say that when they decapitated Paul, his head jumped three times. They didn't see the head of Paul again. And when you read Czech history, it is believed that when his head, any time the head jumps, it creates a well. You know. So you ask yourself a question. Now, when, even when you read a, a portion of Philippians, he said, it had been given to you on the behalf of Jesus, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. You see, and it, let, let's say to me, in, in those days, the days of our fathers, eh, you, you, you will not give your life to Jesus and go to God free. If you give your life to Jesus, you will pay with your blood. Yeah, some of them were put into the den of lions. They used to use the Christians for Olympic Games. So they would arrest the Christians and put them in an arena and release lions. And the lions will massacre them. So when they cut all of us like this, they will take us set by set into the arena. And while the, the lions are chewing this one, you people will be witnessing. You'll be watching it. And the only thing you have to do to exempt yourself or to escape is to say you don't belong you don't belong to Jesus and you don't believe in Jesus anymore. Some of them they were burnt into ashes. Some of them were, they were tied behind horses and the horses would drag them through stones and take their flesh off, you know, of their body. Some of them, their intestines can come out. You know, none of the disciples died a natural death. With the exception of John the Divine, he even was boiled in a hot oil and he didn't die. So they throw him to the island of, of Pas uh, Patmos, an evil island. And some of them, they will put them in a leather bag containing reptiles, 
snakes and scorpions and they will seal it and put it in the ocean yeah so you you ask yourself a question why would this man display so much courage superiority and, and inner liberty in the face of harsh hostility and antagonism it is believed that one of the james when they were going to kill that james he displayed so much courage that the man that was going to one of the people that was going to kill him knelt down before james that he's also a christian so he will not allow him to die alone so the two of them will have to die together mm. and when he was actually going to die he was smiling yeah bishop ignatius when they arrested Bishop Ignatius, he even wrote letters to the Christian that they, they shouldn't pray for his escape because he's also happy to die like the way Jesus Christ died. So when they brought him to where the lions were, when he heard the rolling of the lions, he started laughing. You know, by this book, the Forces Book of Matthews, written by John Fox, whenever I read that, that book, I feel guilty. When he heard the rolling of the lions, he was laughing. Then he said that, I am the wheat of Christ. And I'm, be, I'm ready to be grounded with the teeth of wild beasts that I may be found a pure bread for Christ. And this old man was put into the den of the lions and the lions chew him. They killed him. Polycarp was arrested. You know, Emperor Nero used to use the Christians eh, as his torch light in his farm, his garden. So like, if he come and then capture all of us, he can tie like 20 of us to a bone like this and pour kerosene or a paraffin on us and then set us ablaze. So constantly, his garden was, you know, yeah, always on fire. There was fire in his garden and the fire was the Christians. The one day he, he arrested Polycarp. Polycarp was 86 years. Then he said, deny Jesus or I will kill you. Then Polycarp said that 85 years have I known the man and he have never done me any evil. So how can I blaspheme my savior and my king that died for me on the cross? Then he told Emperor Nero that you, even for far too long, have desired to have a discourse with you about my savior and my master jesus christ then he said you see this fire you are going to use to burn me it will burn in some few hours it will extinguish but you are ignorant about the fire at the other side that the worms in it will never die and that fire will not extinguish they went there to actually burn him and put him in the fire i said no no they shouldn't burn him. he walked into the fire himself so put majestically into the fire and he slept in the fire and the fire formed an act around him when the fire formed an act around him one of the roman knights took a dagger and pierced the heart of polyca and blood came out of the heart and according to some of the scholars they believe that the blood transmogrified into a dove and the dove flew away and then part of the blood you know, extinguish the fire. But they did their best to burn him into ashes. Yeah. One, one of the church fathers, I love so much, by the name John Hus. When they arrested John Hus, they told him to recant all his preaching, all the things he said, he should recant it. And they chained him and then he kissed the chain. And he said, I see, my master Jesus was chained with a more terrible chain than this. Before they will bend him, they will, they, they will put him on, on the stake and they tie him. Put one gun powder here, another gun powder here, and they surrounded him with fagots. Before they will break the fire, they told him to recant. Then he said, What I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth, I'm ready to see with my blood. They set him on fire. John Hus, they set him on fire. Eh? When he was in, in the fire, according to Clementus, the scholar, he believed that he was singing hymns. One of the Roman soldiers took some of the fire and pierced his mouth. He fell into the fire, 
they bent him into ashes and took his ashes and poured it in the Rhine River. And they arrested his friend called Jeremy. It's when they arrested him and they bound him to the stake. They wanted to set the fire behind him. He said, no, 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 no. Don't set the fire behind me. If I was afraid, I wouldn't have come here. Come and set it in front of me where I will see it. You see, these men were men who were ready to die for the man because he died for them. And they, they were ready to die for what they believe. But I mean, in our generation, we easily compromise our Christianity. The Jesus, I, I want to say that the Muhammad who didn't die for our, uh, our brother the Muslim, they are ready to die for him. The Jesus who died for us, we are not ready to die for him. Hmm? The Jesus who bled on the cross for us, we are not ready to bleed for him, uh, to bleed for him. So you see, when Jerome was in the fire burning, it is believed by the scholars that when the fire enveloped Jerome, he hollered and said, Oh Lord Jesus, this this soul of flame, I offer it unto thee. This soul, which is full of flames, I offer it unto thee. Yes. So you ask yourself a question, why? Today I won't take my time. You ask yourself a question, why will they endure such harsh hostility and antagonism? You know that Peter, right? was even crucified when he was 90 years old. And Branilo threatened him that he would crucify him. And, and, and it is believed that the church pleaded to Peter to run. And so when Peter was taken out of the city, before he would come out of the city, he met Jesus in a theophonic form. Because that time, met Jesus a real apostle. So Jesus appeared in a theophonic form. So when he saw Jesus in the triumphant form, he knelt down before Jesus. And he asked Jesus, that, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus told him, I'm going to be crucified again. Let me tell you this. Worship is not in songs. Yeah. When you come here, Lord, I give you my heart. You are not worshiping. Yeah. Worship is not in words. Worship is when you put your life on the line for him. That is worship. Because words are cheap. Yeah? Worship is not in crying. Yeah, worship is after you have cried yeah, and you go out there, yeah? you go out there and something confronts you to take Christ out of your heart and you are able to stand. That is worship. You see, worship is losing something for his sake. That is worship. So you know that the first time worship appeared in the Bible is when Abraham was actually was, he was actually going to sacrifice his son. He said, "Stay here, I and the Lord will go and worship." Mm. So when we talk about worship, it's losing something for Christ's sake. So if you are not losing anything for His sake, you are not worshiping God. You are joking. So a lot of Christians in the church they are not worshiping God. They are joking because when it rains, they won't come to church. If they lose their job, they won't come to church. They won't pay their tithe. You see, we have a bunch of Christians who are not ready to lose anything. But before you become a Christian, somebody has to lose his life before you become a Christian. So, Peter knelt down and asked that, Lord, where are you going? And it is believed by the scholars that the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to be crucified again. And because you couldn't stand for me, so I'm going to be crucified again. Then it is believed that Peter understood what the Lord said. So you have to return. I went to Nero. And he said, I don't even deserve to be crucified like him. Turn me upside down. He said, not until you are turned upside down for Jesus. You are not serving him. You are looking. Yeah. What I mean by turn upside down, right? let me tell you. So who in your life is so big in your nature, you be better for you so. You go through something. So I'm asking you a question. Why? I live that two fatty as of fashion and in Satasa. Why will these people endure so much pain and endure so much hostility? Why would they die like they did the way they die? And Paul admonished us that let this mind that was in Christ be in 
with you. Then he said, even though he was God, he thought it no wrong to be like God. But he humbled himself. And can I work it a little bit? Jesus is what we call in, in theology a theanthropic being. Now, a theanthropic being means that Jesus is a God man. Now, according to Mendel's law, every individual is a sum total of the characteristics recessive or dominant in his two immediate progenitors. Which means that your mother's DNA and your father's DNA run within the parameters of your body. So if Jesus' father is God, and then the mother is Mary. It means that he have the life of God in him, and then have the life of a human being in him, and that makes him too anthropic. And it is believed by scholars that right, and that makes it very difficult for him to die, because when he was going to die, there was a complicity between his divinity and humanity, because his human side didn't want him to die. But his divine side wanted him to die. So because of that complacency, he was going through, he contracted what we call in medical science, hemohydrosis, that will allow blood to come out of your sweat glands instead of, instead of water. And you see, when you contract that sickness, your body will become so tender. You see, so it means that when they were whipping Jesus, it was not easy for him at all. And that's why when even when he went to the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Because how can I be humiliated like this? The Lord Jesus, the way he was humiliated, there was no pintest under him. Uh, they, they, they slipped him naked, the man of Galilee. And that's why no one do said that his was so ugly and the reason why he said his death was so ugly was the fact that he said like no other man he expresses the power of god like no other man and he said he was not a coward he was courageous enough to withstand the money changes the pharisees and the sadducees he was not powerless he was eye to the blind feet to the lame and mouth to the thumb and he was ears to the deaf but no one said with all this miraculous splendor this powerful man of Galilee he died and on miraculous death he was so powerful but he died a powerless death his death was so ugly and when the people were coming to arrest him and, and sleep him naked if, if it was me my God I would have caught from heaven to bend them and you know when the people were coming to arrest him or apprehend him Peter took a sword and let me tell you Peter didn't know how to take the ear of the dad Peter wanted to divide the head of the dad and the guy swore swear and then he took the ear of the dad and Jesus picked the ear up and placed the ear back let it digress a little bit the sign of true Christianity is the ability to forgive your enemies. They were coming to kill him and somebody had taken their ears back. He put the ear up and then placed it back. Let me tell you, no matter how funny people will treat you, no matter how people will ridicule you, because you are a child of God, love them and forgive them. Let it go that all Christians who are in the house of God, holding a lot of in their heart towards people. But if you really want to be a child of your father who is in heaven, do your maximum best and forgive those who offend you. Forgive those who take you for granted. Do your maximum best and love people. The Bible said Peter took the sword and took the ear of one of the servants. Look at what the Lord Jesus said to Peter. He said, Peter, Put the sword back because if I came to fight, like I will ask my father, he will give me 12 legends of angels. Now, legends in military science in antiquity is 6,000 mighty soldiers, 3,000 horsemen, and 3,000 footmen. So, 12 legends of angels is 72,000 angelic battalions. A 
And one of the angels went to Egypt, and one night he cleared all the firstborns in Egypt. So if Jesus came to fight, then he can call his father, and the father will give him these angels to come and fight at the soldiers. But he didn't come to fight, he had to humble himself and go through humiliation for our sake. So they caught him and then removed all his cloth without any pipes under him. And they wave and, and they wave a crown of thorns and then push it on his head. It was not fitting, but they push it. So he was bleeding on the head. And they walk him. You know, Jesus was walk, you know, he was walk to three different courts. Within three miles, so he was so exhausted, and even though he was so exhausted, they were creeping with sheep bones and with iron bones. When they creep him like this, it will go to the tender sections of his body, clearing into his subcutaneous flesh, it will go into his very underlying muscles. According to Dr. Nabil, when they creep you like that, your intestines can even come out. Scholars are saying when they keep him, his back was like a horse field. When they were creeping him like that, when he was going through pain, he could have called fire from heaven like Elijah, called fire from heaven to burn the soldiers who were coming for him. But he didn't call fire from heaven. And the reason why he didn't call fire from heaven was the fact that the reason why he endured was the fact that he had you in his mind. The reason why he didn't give up was the fact that he had me in his mind. And therefore, if he had loved us so much, we have to also love him so much. So John said we love him because he first loved us. My God, after the weeping, the master was so free and they walk him. Oh my God, through the street of Jerusalem, they put 125 and then 175 patabulo on his shoulder to walk up the hill. When he was going, my God, when he was climbing up the hill, he fell down the first time. And because he was too weak, he was bleeding from behind. He was bleeding on his head. He had lost so much blood. He was flayed, so he fell. And the second time, the master fell again. I'm asking you a, a, a question. When the master went down with the cross, where was Peter? Uh, where was uh, Judas? Where was Matthew? Where was Andrew? Where was James? They were nowhere to be found. The cross was going down, but the disciples were not there to carry the cross. And it is so sad that in our generation, the cross of Jesus Christ is going down. But if you look and see the men of God are not ready to lift the cross of Jesus. We preach, we can talk about anything without talking about the old rugged cross. But let me tell you, it is the cross that carries the power of salvation. And therefore, when you come to church, we should not play games behind the pulpit. We should not be the God as if it's a philosophical system. Because preaching the gospel as if it's a philosophical system will lose the power of conviction. So when we come to church, we have to lift up the cross of Jesus to you. Uh, Bishop, when Jesus went down with the cross, where was Judas? Judas, because of money, was nowhere to be found. Because of money, a lot of men of God are not preaching the truth. A lot of men of God have turned the gospel into business. They are merchandising their might. How many will you hear about the cross? How many will you hear about the blood? How many will you hear about Jesus? Because of money, Peter Judas was not around to carry the cross. And Peter also, because of tribulation, persecution, he was not around to carry the cross. A lot of Christians, because of a little bit of challenge, they are not around. They don't want to carry the cross of Jesus. They don't want to do anything. So the soldiers carry the cross back and put it on the master's shoulder. He was so weak. So he, he was so weak that he couldn't 
go with the cross. He fell on the third time. But who was there to carry the cross? I pray that in our generation, the Lord will give us men and women, young men and young women. The Lord will give us prophets, preachers, and musicians who will be able, who will be ready to carry the cross of Jesus. Because Peter, because Bishop, the cross is going down in our generation. The cross is going down in the church. The cross is being downplayed in the church. But if we don't preach the cross, my God, the church will lack power. And he saw the third time. When he saw the third time, the soldiers saw a man by the name of Simon of Cyrene. Simon of Cyrene was going somewhere. He had his own ambition. He had his own vision. He had his own destination. But his ambition, his vision, and his destination was interrupted by the soldiers to come and carry the cross. I pray in the name of Jesus that as you are here, the Lord God will interrupt your vision and your ambition and put the cross on your neck and put the cross on your shoulder. No power. My God, you may have your own ambition. You want to live your life for the world. You want to live your life for that man. But I pray that the Lord Jesus will interrupt your ambition and put the cross on your neck and put the cross on your shoulder. Simon of Sabrina, I have been saying that he was going his son my God was going to mind his own business, but he was interrupted with the cross and pray for all the young ladies here under the sound of my voice that the Lord will interrupt you. Some of you are living for yourselves, some of you are living for the self aggrandizement, but I pray that the Lord will interrupt. I pray that Jesus will interrupt your ambition. Where was Simon of Salim going? We didn't know where he was going. Maybe he was going to a place very important to him. But the Lord saw the need to interrupt his mission. I pray in the name of Jesus that some of you, the Lord Jesus, will interrupt your mission and put the cross on your neck. Because the cross is going down. There's somebody in the house at all. The cross is going down. I pray that you stop your own ambition and come and help us bring the gospel. Come and help us carry the cross in the name of Jesus. Young lady, tonight you came here with your own ambition. Some of the people are living for themselves. Some of the people are living for the world. Some of the people want to please themselves. But I pray that tonight the Lord God will interrupt your own vision and put the cross on your shoulder. If some of us, if we didn't abandon our own ambition, we wouldn't have been able to do the work of Jesus Christ. Some of us have to set aside our profession and decide to follow the Lord Jesus with all power, with all tenacity, with all intelligence, with all diligence. I pray, I pray, I pray. Young lady, hear me. Young man, hear me. I pray that whatever you are in, whatever you are into, the Lord will interrupt you and put the cross on your shoulder. A lot of young ladies in our country are turning into slaves because of what they will eat. They are turning into slaves because they want to be famous, because they want to be accepted. But I pray in the name of the Lord that the Lord Jesus will interrupt your mission and put the cross on your shoulder. Abima Makarusha, who will carry the cross in our generation. I pray for every young man here under the sound of my voice who desire to do ministry. I pray that you will never do ministry for your own self advertisement, but you will be a carrier of the cross. I pray that wherever you go, 
in my Christian race. I pray you will finish well in your Christian race. I pray you will not throw in the tap. There's somebody in the house. Oh my God. And so when he got to where they will crucify our master, they put him on the cross and they put a 74, they put a, a seven inspired nail in between his radio and his carpal bone. And he started nailing it. He caught his medium man and set fire this way. They put another seven inspired nail in between this radio and carpal bone. Caught the medium death here. Set fire this way. 
He put another seven in his back nail. In between the internet and the space of his foot. He caught the paranormal nerve. And sent fire this way. And you know, it is believed by scholars. Right? It is believed by scholars that the death on the cross is the most horrible form of execution known to my time. And he said, the word, the word excruciating is derived from the word crucifixion. So, you know, when Jesus was on the cross, my God, on the cross, tremendous strain is exerted on the wrist, the arm, and the shoulders. And usually resulted into the dislocation of the shoulders and the dislocation of the elbow joint. Oh my God, when you spend some hours on the cross, the arms held up and held upward will held the rib cage in a position which will make it extremely difficult to exhale and totally impossible to take a deep breath. Oh my God, the muscle from the loss of blood and oxygen will undergo severe cramp and spasmodic contraction until the one being crucified suffocate in his own field. Oh my God. And to hasten or expedite death, they will break the leg of the one being crucified. And a pool of fluid will congeal around the heart of the one being crucified and that will cause congestive heart failure while you are alive. Then the one being crucified because almost it not a say right. Then some I say, then nine I say, because of that you will try to take a deep breath, but exhaling will cause the pressure on the the the, 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 the foot that is nailed, and to inhale will cause pressure on the hand that is nailed, and this man will draw and suffocate in his own fluid and die. So scholars are saying that our master Jesus died out of congestive heart failure. He died out of hypervolumic shock. He died out of cardiac induced arrhythmia. He died out of exhausted asphyxia. He lost so much liquid in his system that his heart couldn't pump blood and oxygen into his system. The master was going through so much pain. He could have given up on the cross. But he looked at you and I and didn't give up. And let me tell you at a point when you are going through all that torture, you will say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. When he was going through all the pain, he endured it. And he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. But at the point, the deal has to be sealed. So my sin, her sin, his sin, your sin came upon the master. And because the Lord's eye is too pure to behold iniquity, the Lord took his attention from Jesus. And when he took his attention from Jesus, my God, the master was in so much pain because he lost what we call in theology both horizontal support and vertical support. Horizontal support is from human beings. The human beings were supposed to give him the morale and give him the funds to die. Peter, John, James, they have all rejected him. So the vertical support too that he need from the father to endure, the father also took his attention from him. And the master had and then said, oh my Father, if Judas was selling because of 30 pieces of silver, if Peter said, I don't know him, if my father Joseph is not around, why have thou forsaken me? Oh, my father, why have thou forsaken me? Can you give me an explanation? Why have
les grecs d'Osouza, les gabrans d'Osoko, les kabadabadasa, les dadadada, les babalabasote, les grecs d'Osoko, can you speak in tongue for that two seconds? Rabadabaha, les babalabaha, les lalalasa, les babalabasa, les babalabasa, the master hollered and he said, Why have thou forsaken me? Oh my God. No one John said that. He didn't die like Socrates, who took hammer and drank and died calmly as a demonstration. Of the magnanimity of the soul and became a testimony to immortality. He said he didn't die like Rabbi Akiba, who expressed inner liberty and superiority in the face of harsh hostility and antagonism. He said he didn't die like mighty who's who courageously confronted the Roman Empire and confronted the fire for the law. He said he didn't die like Polycar, who walked majestically into the fire. He said he didn't die like Bishop Ignatius, who courageously walked into the den of the lions. And he said the reason why uh, people like Polycar, Ignatius, the reason why they had so much courage and so much tenacity to die was the fact that for them, when they were dying, Jesus was in heaven helping them to die. But when he was dying, no one was in heaven helping him to die. And that is why he said, my father, if that will forsake me, why have thou forsaken me? So they said to me, Paul, look at what he did on the cross. And he said, who shall separate us from the love of God? He said, separation. Shall perry, shall famine, shall sword, shall nakedness. Then he said, As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long, and we are come as sheep to the slaughter. Then Paul said, Nay, in all distance, we are more than conqueror through him that loves us and lay down his life for us. And Paul said, We are persuaded that neither height nor death, nor principality nor power, nor life or death, or things present or things to come, will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is through Jesus Christ. So the reason why the founding fathers of the church, the reason why Paul, Polycarp, Bishop Ignatius, John Hus, John Hooper, Roland Taylor, and all these mighty gladiators, Oh, I know you. 
Kenti, one for Ufa Kameni, the Bonnie Baby, Baby, Nina Dazo, I want you to walk Mami, I sit down back, run, I'm a farmer. It's how I go in tea, one for Ufa Kameni. Me poni be pre pre, ni na dauso. A unti u a u o kabari, mami. A si da me bra, na me ba ma o. A wo Yesu e, ni wa Yesu, ni wa e. Manifestation of fire in this house. Yeah. 
tonight some of you will be arrested by the presence of God some of you will be arrested by the fire of God some of you will be arrested by the power of God lift up your right hand to the heavens you see those of you who want to come to the altar you can come to the altar and come and kneel down you are telling the Lord Lord let me be on fire set me on fire let your fire be injected into my bones. Let me be crazily in love with you. If you want to come to the altar and kneel down and pray, you can come to the altar and come and pray. Say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. Oh, I can't feel you. Say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. Oh, Lord.
power to endure for you up to the end. Let me be a carrier of the cross. Let me carry the cross up to the end. I don't want to lose my Christianity. Wherever I will go, no matter how difficult things will be, I'll be to carry the cross in the name of Jesus. Say, my Father, my Maker. My Father, my Maker. My Father, my Maker.
the boy started echoing. Remember, there's no time. Remember, he said, the angels carrying him back. When they went there, they, they pushed him inside his body. He said, he woke up. And he said, when he woke up, the wife was looking at him. He said, I've watched you struggle for like one hour. And that's why Prophet Kofi Ebro, he preaches the way he speaks. Look at now, look at our prophet. You meet them and don't meet God. If you like, I mean, mention our prophet in Ghana. Mention them. Apart from Nana said, Sarkot, yes, and, uh, and uh, my friend, Achenko. I mean, the popular one. Apart from Nana said, Sarkot, yes, and then uh, my friend, Achenko. And then Dr. Kufi Ojuro. Take any one of them, take their messages. If you go to their YouTube account, and go to their Facebook and watch the administration and message and see whether you fall in love with Jesus. Sometimes when I read the books of Prophet Rajwana and I listen to Prophet Bob Jones and I listen to Prophet Sadi and I compare to the scriptures and I look at our current prophet in Ghana calling themselves major. I want to stand on this and pray. Remember, there is no time. There is no time. So you are lifting a prayer, you are telling the Lord, Lord, help me not to lose my fight. Help me not to lose my fight. So you make me not lose my fight. You make me not lose my fight. You make me not lose my fight. Nipa don't know what to do. You make me not lose my fight. 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 You make me not Paul said, for we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And each one of us will give account to what he have done with his body whilst he was in the body. And Paul said, we being, he said, we knowing how terrible God is being pursued all men. We are lifting a prayer. The last prayer, you are telling the Lord, help me not to lose my fire. Lift up your right hand to the heavens. Say, oh, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord.
or a health worker come to the front. A policeman, a policewoman, a soldier, a medical officer, a health worker come to the front.
I see nine angels in the house. And this angel, they are tying people with the mantle of prayer and fire. The mantle of revival. Some people will be on fire. Thank you. 